Um, okay, Steve Zekas, uh, you're online. By the way, thanks for the votes. I really appreciate it. I uh, hope I could do well for you guys. Yes, uh, I'm online. We're early, but I'm okay to start. We are early, but that's okay. All right. Well, I'll start the um, next part, um, which is the update on the SARA section. So let me share my screen. Everybody has a PowerPoint on this, but I'm just going to go to the website and talk from there. So let me see if I can do that. Uh, Let's see, share screen. And I think I want this page. So can everybody see the uh, Sarah website? Yes. Okay, that's good. And I've got 45 minutes for this. I don't think I need as much, uh, as much of that time, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and the topic name is the uh, Sarah sections. But what I usually do now is just kind of go through the entire website on, on new things. So, but I'll start out on the, the Sarah sections. Um, everything in that PowerPoint that you were um, supplied with, um, I think I'll cover all those points, but at least this will be more interactive if I'm on the um, Sarah website. So, and I'll be focusing on this top ribbon here. That's where a lot of the information for Sarah is. So if we go to um, sections, I'll start off on the, um, I'm sorry, introduction page. We added this to the section because very early on, um, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, new SARA members and beginners to radio astronomy uh, wanted some place to um, uh, visit to um, educate themselves on uh, radio astronomy. Uh, this is not the only part where you can find a lot of inf uh, good information. The uh, education um, uh, tab is, is also very good. I'll, I'll take a look at that later. Uh, but um, And when we do meet in Gr Green Bank, uh, we do get a lot of uh, first-time SARA attendees and, and new members. So um, uh, they do make up uh, a good uh, part of our membership, uh, new, new members um, and new to radio astronomy. So um this introduction tab then was um uh put in here as a uh, overall introduction to the sections um and in here uh, you can see a be you can click on this there's information for beginners uh this part here uh, is something new uh, as i mentioned yesterday i'm also a uh, member of the uh, association and lunar uh, and planetary observers and they've got a fairly comprehensive um, podcast um, collection, mostly optical uh, astronomy, but uh, I've done uh, a couple on uh, um, radio astronomy. So one on the 20 meter and one on the radio astronomy in general. They are about um, maybe 20 minutes long. Let me see if I can, uh, it's under SoundCloud. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but that comes up, uh, take a look at that. And let me get back to the, um, uh, the SAR webpage now. Um, and uh, the person who puts these podcasts cast together, his name's Tim Robertson, and um, he welcomes uh, anyone in radio astronomy. I know something about radio astronomy in the solar system, so that could be Radio Joe, Super Sid, um uh, uh, yeah, uh itty bitty telescope anything that's related to that uh, in, within the solar system you'd like to hear from me if you're interested in doing a podcast his email is um towards the end of my uh demo powerpoint uh, that i provided yesterday uh so let's go on to the different sections uh we have six uh different um sarah sections um and this was um uh, the idea behind it is to put everything in SAR in these six different uh, categories to help focus uh, member interests. Um, every section has a coordinator, so I'm the uh, coordinator for the analytical sections. So I'll spend a little more time on, on um, my particular section. Uh, yesterday I gave the demo on the 20 uh, meter um, uh, Skynet uh, radio telescope. There's a link here. Uh, where you can see all the raw data for the observations. You, you don't have to be signed up uh, 
uh, as a, a user through SARA. You can just go click there and see the different observations. Um, uh, uh, the only requirements, and this is the NSF grant, um, you uh, need to be a U.S. citizen. <clears throat> you you agree to only observe uh, non-man-made objects. So, in other words, no uh, artificial uh, satellite uh, tracking. I think uh, when I mentioned that yesterday, I may have blurted out saying the opposite, but that, that's what I meant. And um, you won't uh, provide the password uh, to, to uh, anyone else and your reason for uh, wanting access, which is usually educational. So if you're interested in um, actually using the 20 meter, uh, just email me and, and um, I can send you that statement of requirements. You will agree to it and then I'll, I'll give you the uh, password. Uh, I'm, I'm usually prompt getting back to everyone unless I'm traveling and may be gone for a few days. Um, as Bruce noted in the, um, um, the minutes of the board of director meeting, uh, we've been averaging about, uh, five hours of, um, radio telescope time on the 20 meter a year, although we, we do have the ability to get more if we, uh, uh run out. Um, let's see what's next. Um, can I ask uh, a question while you're going through that there with, with that comment you just made? So the five hours, when when does that uh, get reviewed? It, does it get reviewed like on an annual basis or something? Or uh, Well, um, I kind of go into the 20 meter account every uh, now and then. Or if somebody sees that the uh, radio time um, is getting low, they can email me. So when you go into the uh, 20 meter Skynet account, uh, you may recall from yesterday that that tab, uh, there was one for optical, one for radio telescope. We don't do the optical, though. One for radio scope, and there was another tab that said account. You can actually see how many seconds are left in the account. So I think there's about eight and a half thousand seconds uh, left. So as it gets lower, hopefully someone will let me know. Or as I go in from time to time myself, I do check on that. So... Uh, I guess from it, another, another angle is, are we doing a good job of using our five hours and and keeping the interest from the NSF people's point of view so that we continue to get those hours? Oh, well, we um, we pay for that five hours. Uh, we, we purchase it through Green Bank. So as long as uh, we're paying for their hours, they will provide it. So okay. that we don't we don't have that kind of restriction on us. If we need more, we'll just pay for for more um, hours. So it's not too costly. Um, I'd also add that the uh, twenty meter Skynet. Uh, we're not the only ones that have an account. It's fairly popular um, uh, nationwide. There's some astronomy clubs that have it. They usually do the optical and sometimes the radio, but it's out there. And there's a there's a Skynet University page. So you can Google that, Skynet University, and you'll see some uh, courses there. And one of them is using the 20 meter. I haven't gone through the course myself. It's free except for like a $60 administration fee. But in that um, uh, um, uh, course, uh, they give you access to the... Um, Skynet uh, telescopes. Um, I assume that's both optical and, and radio, but I mean, definitely the optical since there's a lot of optical exercises there. And I believe uh, people can have their own accounts as well. It's about $60 an hour for a radio telescope time. Um, I'm not sure how that works, uh, an individual account, but um, uh, I've heard that it's, it's possible to get that. So. It's, um, you know, that's a pretty uh, 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 good price for, um, you know, not, not all the ob observations don't need to take that long unless you're running a very large raster scan. Uh, the, the good news about that uh, Skynet network too, now um, we've got this in the PowerPoint, but um, Dr. Reichart, he's a professor at the University of North Carolina. He, um, he oversees the, um, network and, and um, uses the um, 20 meter and, and also the 40 foot telescope that's um, at Green Bank. And um, he, he has several graduate students, they put together papers, uh, but there's an announcement on his website 
Uh, I provide the link in the, the PowerPoint and that talks about uh, they've gotten um, uh, NSF decided to fund uh, another $3 million for the Skynet network uh, to add up to eight more uh, radio telescopes. Uh, so one is in North Carolina, I assume that's Pari, uh, and a couple in Australia, um, and uh, uh, one in Puerto, uh, uh, Puerto Rico, although I don't, I don't know if that was the one that was uh, Arecibo, the one that hit by the hurricane or, or, or not, um, or if they have any others, but um, that's what the announcement said, those um, specifically um, looking into those locations. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but at the moment, it's just the um, 20 meter that's located at uh, Green Bank. Can I make a comment? Can you hear sure. me? Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to comment about the U.S. citizenship uh, requirement. I know that is in um, most NSF or NASA contracts, and it's not for us to not obey that if it's in the contract. But those of us who talk to NSF and NASA, I think should question it. I see so many graduate students in radio astronomy that are not uh, US citizens. They're in the US, they're studying at US universities and some of them have green cards, uh, but citizenship, uh, maybe uh, half of them uh, don't have it. Radio astronomy is a worldwide science. There's tremendous amounts being done at the uh, SKA uh, programs in particularly Australia and South Africa. And there's many very well-educated Chinese radio astronomers. Uh, uh, some of them are studying in the United States. And so I think we should, uh, try to uh, open this up to uh, non-US citizenship. Uh, I, I think the restriction comes from uh, using equipment to um, uh, either disturb co communication to military satellites or some uh, defense use. And I can understand that, uh, but I think it's too restrictive. Mm. I just wanted to so that it, 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 apply, I, I, it came up yesterday, Perry also has the restriction of US citizenship. And uh, I, I think it is too strict. So and, and, to and this has comment. been recent too. Um, I think maybe uh, implemented maybe in um, 2019 or so that came out. Prior to that, uh, we didn't have any restrictions. So I agree with you. It's um, especially if it's going to, this network is going to expand worldwide. It doesn't sound like a very good idea to restrict it to U.S. citizenship. So maybe they'll, they'll, they'll change their minds on that. Yeah. And, you know, at the moment, it's, it's an honor system. Every, you know, I mean, when you're agreeing to that statement, it's, um, I haven't seen any enforcement, but I think, you know, that's the honor system they want and, you know, we'll, we'll try to um, uh, follow. Sure, it, it could be that the uh, the principal investigator is a U.S. citizen, but he has graduate students that are not U.S. citizens. And, you know, it, it could get by that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'd, like to make a, I'd like to make a quick comment. Uh, sure. The, uh, this is for Sandy. Uh, Perry doesn't have a restriction. Uh, only if we have a grant that has a restriction would that uh, be a, a appropriate. But we we don't have we don't have any restrictions that has to be U.S. owned. And we have quite a few that have used it from Australia and Puerto Rico and other countries, and of course Europe. So we do not have a restriction at Perry. Okay, well, when you say only if you have a grant, you mean uh, use of the telescope is not restricted. That's correct. It, it is not. Okay, good. Okay. I, I wouldn't agree to that. All right. In, in general, yes. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. All right.
just one that's a side issue I wanted to bring up. No. A good point. I mean, I agree. We shouldn't have those restrictions. Uh, continuing on. Uh, so um, uh, uh, I said uh, you can go to that general link I have uh, above here to see all the um, the observations. Along with those observations, there um, you can get access to the raw data. Uh, the only raw data you won't see on the 20 meters when it's related to the uh, to pulsars because those files are so large. I've got a link here how to access that. And actually, it's going to uh, Skip Creeley, one of our members, um, and also a volunteer for this. Uh, but he does have a way because he knows um, um, some of the uh, scientists there and, and um, uh, he may be able to get that uh, data for you. So there's some instructions when you um, click that link uh, to follow. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see, I think I covered that. Uh, on the bottom of every um, SARA section page, there are some useful links. Uh, we had a comment once, why doesn't SARA give out um, certificates, uh, tra uh, training certificates or award certificates related to uh, radio astronomy? Although they do exist, so uh, this gets into that. Uh, the Astronomical League has a uh, radio astronomy observation program, bronze, silver, gold. Um, it's a very good program. If you want, if you're new to radio astronomy and want to structure an approach through it, tells you how to observe and and uh, go about that. So I went through this program. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. Um, um, very good program. The Citizen Science Radio Astronomy Awards programs also with the Astronomical League. Um, uh, they've got a, a list of citizen science programs where they award um, certificates. Uh, they're not all radio astronomy. Some are, um, most are optical, but there are some radio astronomy uh, programs in there. Uh, this link for the FCC license programs, those are ham radio operator uh, license. So you've got the general, I'm sorry, technician general and extra license. Uh, I've gone through them, um, uh, not that I'm a ham radio operator, but when we meet at uh, Green Bank uh, every year, um, there's so many ham radio operators and always listening to them and the ham radio uh, talk that uh, I got interested in that part of every uh, certificate uh, license is uh, a knowledge of radio technology, especially the last one, the most advanced extra. And I, I think that comes in useful to understand radio astronomy in general. So I would highly recommend those as well. Uh, some of you may be aware of uh, two websites, Coursera and EDX. Uh, they're a, a network of uh, worldwide universities, um, uh, top universities. They put together online training programs where um, offered for free. A lot of times you can take the test for free and show that you've passed the test. Others um, may charge a, a, a small fee, maybe about $50 for a, an official certificate. Uh, but EDX has come out with two radio astronomy uh, certificates. One is the radio astronomy uh, certificate program. Uh, I went through that. It's a very good uh, program. There's another one. I didn't put the link here, but it's just as easy to find uh, when you're on the EDX website. That's the Radio Astronomy 2 program, and that one focuses on interferometry, and uh, hopefully I'll have time to do that um, one day. Uh, so that uh, brings us to the, uh, through the first section. Uh, let's see, I'll uh, go to the um, outreach section there. Uh, the one I like to, what I like to bring your attention to here is uh, something called outreach brochure. So if you do outreach and, uh, you know, maybe you're at a ham convention or somewhere else and you wanted some literature on SARA, uh, you can download these, you can print them. Uh, one is a general uh, SARA informational brochure for signing up, membership, and so forth. And another one uh, is specific to SuperSID. And another one is the uh, brochures for student and teacher um, grants. 
so that's pretty popular. Um, and uh, take a look at those. Um, another one. Now, there are sections, there's a uh, galactic and cosmological section, a solar system section, and a stellar section. All three of those share something in common, and that's towards the bottom. They have this data template, and you might find this of use. A few years ago, um, I worked with a few others at uh, SARA. We were we had the idea of maybe putting together a SARA database of uh, radio astronomy observations. And the first step, if we did that, uh, would be coming up with a, uh, a data template uh, where we could uh, standardize um, and go about in a systematic way observational data. So this was our, our attempt to do that. Um, uh, you can download that and take a look at that. Um, the three sections have a slightly different one. It could always use some updates and we've got some notes in there on perhaps how to update that. But uh, that um, I think is a good idea. Um, and the last section I want to say something about is uh, the electronics and information, uh, electronics and instrumentation section. Um, this looks at, uh, well, as the name implies, a lot of different, uh, um, a lot of different instrumentation that's employed uh, uh, through radio uh, astronomy programs, from fairly easy to more advanced. Um, uh, instrumentation. I think if you make it out to the Green Bank uh, um, conference uh, next summer, hopefully we'll uh, all be there. I'd like you bring your attention that this is not a remote telescope, but while we're at Green Bank, we have access to it. It's 24 7 if you want to use it. Uh, when you click on the link, there's a manual there, and I believe there's some exercises you can uh, do. Uh, with the 40-foot uh, dish. Uh, one of our um, on-site uh, lectures, I think that may be on the Sunday or the first day is a, uh, and Skip, uh, I believe has been doing this lately when we've met, is uh, a tutorial on how to use the 40-foot dish. So that's um, uh, one of the highlights, I think, of uh, when we meet in Green Bank. Uh, let's see. Stephen, uh, let me ask yes. you a quick question about the, I notice uh, that, of course, as long as I've been, or more or less as long as I've been with Sarah, there's, um, there's been the uh, RASDR project, um, and uh, I was, uh, I was kind of interested in the uh, RASDR, and it just sort of went away. Um, I guess that project is uh, totally stopped, non-existent, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, well, uh, it may be or maybe not. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bogdan's the sec uh, section coordinator. Um, he may be able to tell you where it stands. But yeah, I've heard, yes, it stopped or maybe it's still on. The last that I've heard, let's see, that was maybe in... The last year we met in 2019 that um, they were some of these um, um, uh, wrestlers available for testing. Um, I can't remember how many, maybe about five or so. Uh, so they may still be out there. Um, and that was an attempt to have, well, could we develop a universal telescope with a very... Um, wide range of frequencies. And that was one of the reasons why that um, data template was developed too, because if everybody's out there with a raster and hooking it up to their antennas, uh, how would we collect all this data? Right. And, right. and what could we do? And um, um, one of the things I, uh, actually I should show this too. Um, let me go back to the analytical section. One of the things uh, when I started out doing these uh, demos, um, uh, one of the first questions I asked people, well, we have this raster, um, what would we do? What can we tell people to observe? And um, 
through the discussions and demos, I think everybody agreed that uh, the fading of Cassiopeia A would be a good observation program because it fades every year. Dr. Reithardt had an excellent paper on that. Mm -hmm. So he kind of shows how to go about that. Uh, and looks like I've got uh, a link for the article there. Um, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if that's Dr. Reichardt's article, but it's not uh, hard to find. So if we collected that, where would we put that? Uh, so, uh, but I haven't heard the latest. I think Bogdan would be the um, best person to tell you, the section coordinator for the instrumentation section. Um, he may tell you where that uh, is, uh, what the latest is on that. Well, um, with relative to RD, uh, the the R R A S D R four that was based on the Lime S D R and uh, they've quit making the Lime S D R so um, it may be the points moot but uh, you know it uh, I was kind of involved in some of the testing of the as as the stuff was being developed but uh, it just I mean after a while we did just kind of faded away so I was just kind of checking to see if it was officially dead or uh, just what so i'll check with bogdan that's fine yeah i mean if there's an interest um in that i suppose that can be a topic of discussion in the future but yeah. i don't have the latest at, at this point sure okay uh, I, I, I a, might... quick, a, a quick comment oh, no, no, no. Uh, on on the uh, on this the rasu 4 that was um, based on lime sdr and unfortunately the lime sdr is not available anymore and it's somewhat questionable uh, whether we'll be back on the market at any time soon. Right. Yep. Okay. So perhaps that's why, um, you know, unless there's a, a, a major change, that's why it perhaps um, has stalled at this point. Uh, but Bogdan would be your best bet for... Uh, okay. Maybe nope. his, no problem. His, I'll, I'll be glad I think to ask was him. central to that. Um, and, and I uh, neglected to say, once we did the CAS A... Um, uh, the following years, I posted one on uh, Pulsars and Masers, and, and this is where um, yesterday's demo was posted, as well as the PowerPoint that I don't have in front of me. But if you want to access that, plus you have that in your um, in your proceedings, uh, I might also say that uh, this uh, Maser observation uh, demo that I did last year. Uh, that presentation, I converted it in, into an article. And if you're members of the uh, Astronomical League, uh, or even if you're not, you can um, go to their, they have a magazine called The Reflector. So members get that in the mail, hard copy. Uh, but you can also go to the Astronomical League website, look at their June issue. It's a quarterly magazine. And this PowerPoint was converted to an article. So you'll see that. I, I believe I call it quantum chemistry of astronomical masers. So you'll see that in there. Uh, let's see. I think I covered the sections, what I wanted to do there. So maybe I'll hop around here now uh, next to the sections. Oh, there's a link right here for the, the raster. Um, um, I don't know if this has been updated, but uh, you can take a look at what's in there. Oh, not, up, not updated. <laughs> no. I think the last may have been the raster four, um, and that was back in 2019, if that was the, the latest that I was aware of. Uh, so I don't know where that is now. I, uh, I believe that, uh, that the data under that heading is uh, stopped with the uh, raster two. Oh, okay. That, <laughs> so, okay. so it, you know, I don't think it even has anything to do with the four. So that's all right. All right. Um, I remember seeing. Um, a schematic of, of an updated one that um, uh, Bogdan had. But yeah, I, I can't remember the number version on that that he showed me. So if we go to the Sarah um, shop next. Uh, can you, you can still see the, the website even though I, I changed the, the link, right? I'm on the Sarah store now. Okay, yes. that's good. So the big change here, the big success is the uh, scope in the box still under $300. So this has been a uh, wonderful uh, addition, um, uh, but there are um, other things on the website. So this scope in the box is um, very popular. Um, I enjoyed putting it together. You learn something a little bit about uh, radio astronomy and the software and then, and then get to use it. So great, uh, great addition. Uh, let's see. Um, let me go over to the, um, 
<clears throat> education uh, section. Let me see if I do this right. If you go down to the education links, and if you go to the first one on the education links, well, there's a lot of great things here for education, but this first particular link is very comprehensive. And uh, you can see that this list is, uh, is quite long. And again, more information for newcomers as well as um, ad advanced users, I, I believe. So uh, very good link here. Um, administrative, I always like showing this and then management. So if you're a, uh, an officer in Sarah or on the board or new to this, uh, this or, or just interested in what goes on with Sarah, this is the page to look at. Um, I posted a few things in here as we needed them, um, but uh, not everything. Some of this is uh, prior to my time uh, with Sarah when I started in 2013. Uh, we have also used this as to post some of our historical um, uh, material on Sarah. So I was glad to hear too that um, Charles Osborne is our historian for Sarah. So he's been collecting a, a lot of information. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, take a look at this. There's, there's a lot of good materials here. Um, and uh, I think uh, that would uh, be of interest. Uh, next one, this uh, meeting uh, tab. I like this. This is new. I like this one here. Other meetings. You can see we have um, we have the Drake Lounge posted, and then we started something new. It started off as our top radio telescope observation program. Looks like they got radio astronomy observation program. This started in June, and this looks, looks like a good idea. And since I have a little time, I like to segue in, into uh, something. Uh, that maybe we can use this time for. Uh, I attended the virtual conference for the 18th Synthesis Imaging Workshop. Um, and uh, that allowed for, uh, I don't know, let's see, the usually attendees are, usual number of attendees, maybe about 25 or so, 35. I, I'm not sure, it's not a very big group when they used to meet in person. Having gone virtual, it was uh, 500 this year. I just made the cut, um, I was on the waiting list, about 50 of us were, and we got in, although I was a little bit too late to sign up for the uh, live uh, tutorials, it was about half a day for that. But anyway, it was a week-long conference, much of the day, and that was an excellent uh, program, and that sponsored by NRAO, and that focused on the VLA and VLBA, very large array, very long baseline array. So that is uh, some of the ultimate uh, telescopes uh, in radio astronomy. And one of the things I learned there in one of the sessions was um, uh, they said, I think this was during the tour of the virtual tour, they said anyone can submit a proposal uh, for the VLA and VB, uh, VLBA anyone, anyone around the world. And the thing that tempted everybody, I think, was they said they even had a high school student or maybe a group of high school students that um, were successful in getting a proposal for um, radio telescope time. Uh, so, you know, my hat off to that high school student or group of high school students, because uh, if you ever sat through one of these uh, synthesis imaging workshops, uh, they're quite, quite comprehensive. I, my opinion, they operate at a graduate uh, university level, both in the mathematics and the physics. Um, so when I went, so now that I've heard a high school student can submit a proposal, uh, my recommendation is, and maybe this uh, radio astronomy observation party time uh, would be a good place for it. Is why doesn't Sarah put together a proposal for this? Uh, there are windows to submit a proposal. I know if I waited to, for me to get around to this, it'd be in retirement when I had more time and that very steep learning uh, curve, um, even though I sat through the uh, workshop, uh, 
I, I've learned how much there is I need to know to submit a proposal and, and really understanding all of that is, you know, a, another step. But if we all come together on this and kind of gain from the experience of putting together proposals, maybe this could be a regular Sarah, Sarah uh, endeavor. Uh, endeavor. Uh, but if we do do this, I was thinking uh, these, uh, you know, set aside some time on, on one of these um, observation sessions amongst us um, to come up with a topic. The topic I was thinking of personally was um, something in radio astronomy um, um, in, in within the solar system. Um, and uh, they have the, the, uh, the um, uh, website for the, uh, well, it's called 18th Census. This one, they hold it again in two years. It will be the 19th Synthesis Imaging Workshop. But every year, they post all the lectures. This year, they started posting the um, uh, audio visual. So you, you can have a look at that. Uh, but there is one, um, one of the lectures and as well as the, the video for it. It was called Polarization. Um, and on their page 3940 or slide 3940, they were talking about uh, Mars and moon polarization studies. So I thought that might be something easy to start off with. Uh, they do have a website uh, for all prior proposals, um, which you can access and have a look at that. There were several prior proposals. Um, I'm assuming all these proposals were successfully um, um, uh, accepted and improved. But there were several on, on uh, Martian dust storm studies. So that was something else that caught my interest. But have a look at all the proposals. Maybe that might uh, stir some interest on the different topics they have. And maybe at some future point, if there's enough interest among us all, uh, we can do this. Uh, Rich uh, Russell, he attended this. Uh, I think, Rich, that was, uh, what, a couple of years ago you went? I think you attended both a virtual and, a, and a, an in-person one, right? I, I've been to, uh, I've been to uh, four of these, um, and uh, I'm uh, an active archivist uh, for the VLA and the ALMA, so I download uh, the raw data, uh, calibrate it, and uh, submit it. I think there's a bunch of journal articles I put together on uh, some of the successes there. Uh, by the way, it's our top radio telescope observation party. Our op doesn't uh, roll off the tongue, so uh, mm -hmm. I'll have to fix that. Um, and uh, yes, I would love to. Uh, I would love to see if anybody would like to go in on a proposal. Um, we're, we're, we can't get to the 2023 proposals now because we're a little late, but we go for a 2024 proposal. It takes about a year to process through if you do it right. And um, so if we come up with a good idea, and uh, I could direct people to using the CASA program to you know, learn how to do calibration with the big uh, interferometers and things like that. Really fun to do. Um, and uh, that's the next level of, uh, instead of your home, uh, your home uh, radio astronomy project, this is the big, you get to actually process the data from the big dishes. And uh, very good, and you get beautiful pictures out of them. Mm. So, uh, uh, one of the big yeah, this is the ultimate uh, radio astronomy project. Uh, one of the things they told us was uh, to process the data. So I didn't have this. You needed a, a, a Mac uh, laptop or the other one was a Linux uh, laptop, which I don't have. So I, I in the chat, I mentioned, well, what if I only have a Windows laptop? So they said, well, you can use a virtual uh, machine. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. So maybe that's something I have to invest yeah. in the future. But uh, I think mean, one step at a time. I recommend um, Linux uh, or you get a Mac laptop and uh, that, that seems to work fine. Okay. Um, what, what have you been using? I've got a Linux. Uh, I had to learn Linux to do this. So uh Okay, um, so when the time comes, I may consult you on <laughs> what might be a good model for but, that. But if you guys, if you guys go to the uh, um, the website, um, the NRAO website, and go to the scientist section, and uh, under observation uh, opportunities, they have uh, tutorials on how to do all this stuff and where to download the software. It's all free. And how to, and they have tutorials on how to download the uh, observations. And uh, I recommend you go do the tutorials because they're very, uh, very good. 
straightforward. You follow the tutorials, you'll get a nice process data from the raw data uh, from these uh, telescopes. And uh, you'll learn a lot. And uh, then you, what I did after that is I, after I finished the tutorial, I went and got a, a brand new uh, observation. Uh, and uh, that worked well. I mean, even though I had no idea what it was going to look like. So uh, I highly recommend it. It's the next level of uh, interferometry uh, for uh, amateurs. Okay, that's, uh, that's good. I think uh, I've gone over everything that I wanted to say. Um, and I think we're at an early uh, point. Is there maybe any other um, questions or discussions or even on the 20 meter demo? I didn't have a lot of time for that. So I was kind of rushing through that yesterday, but if there's any questions on that, I can answer or, or uh, let's see, when's the next, uh, next meeting, uh, ne next lecture is at 2.30. So we do have about uh, 30 minutes to go. I don't know you, how you want to spend that time or just start early if the next person's ready. Okay, we can start early. Uh, anybody got any more questions for Steve? Uh, Steve like done a great job. What? I think he's doing a really great job and I think you do a really good job of presenting this information and and appreciate you taking the time to, to uh, put together the work on the 20 meter and show how to use it and and I could I would enjoy hearing even more about that later. Okay, thank you. And and we do have the um, we do have an art top um, twenty meter session as well. Good. I think you edited that down, Rich, to about one hour when I looked. Oh no, it's just two hours. It's a uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Recommend everybody look at the uh, YouTube video uh, where Steve did an outstanding. Uh, 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 you know, processing this data and everything on the uh, 20 meter. So uh, the YouTube channel, uh, in fact, all of these lectures that you're seeing uh, this weekend are gonna be uh, posted on YouTube here or the next week. Um, as soon as I get good download speeds and stuff like that, and, uh, I'm gonna process them a little bit, split them up and, uh, and upload them. So uh, you should be able to see all this again.